Um, so I am Michael Amastra. I am an associate in instructional services in the career and technical education office at the New York State Education Department. Um, prior to coming to the department, um, I was a high school business teacher and I had integrated some computer science concepts and taught some introductory level CS in, in my courses in preparing students for an eventual IT pathway. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tracy Jericho. I'm the Western New York Field Associate with the New York State CTE Technical Assistance Center. And I'll tell you more, a little more about them in a few minutes. But I am a former English teacher and a former uh, a retired CTE director. So I've been working in CTE for over 30 years. These are the topics that we hope to discuss today. We hope to have time to talk a bit about program approval, but if we run out of time, know that the NYSED CTE office and the CTE Technical Assistance Center, the TAC, we are here to help you. All right, and feel free during the session to use the Q&A box to put in any questions that come up and we'll do our best to answer all the questions as, as they come in. So first, I'm just going to give a quick overview of our office at the State Education Department. Um, our director is Amy Cox, and these are our support staff. Um, next slide. And these are our content area contacts. So I oversee primarily the business areas, but I also oversee programs in information technology as well as work-based learning. And feel free to reach out to us at any time, you know, if there's ever any questions that come up in the content areas. We're all certified teachers in our content areas and we provide leadership throughout the state. Next. Um, so our primary responsibilities is the big one, which is kind of the money end, is we oversee New York's Perkins Grant, which is the primary supplementary funding for career and tech ed programs in New York. Um, through that, one of the conditions is that we have a process of determining what programs are of sufficient size, scope, and quality. And that's where our program approval process comes in. And that has other benefits to it, which we will get to later on. We also, like I said, provide technical assistance to, assistance to schools throughout all of New York State. We oversee work-based learning programs and registration, and we serve as primary points of contact with everybody on matters related to CTE. We travel all over the state. We do in-person things and also um, appear on sessions like this to provide some additional information and background on what we do. The Technical Assistance Center is often referred to as the TAC, and we are here to help you as well. We're funded through the Strengthening Career and Technical Education Act, fondly known as Perkins 5, and we're overseen by the New York State De Education Department. And our role is to assist schools and BOCES to address the priorities in the state Perkins plan. The priorities listed on this slide, as well as a list of things that your CTE field associate, like me, that we can do to help you. So um, our main goal is increasing access to high quality CTE programs. And the nice part about that is I think that aligns very well with some of the goals of computer science education in the state. Um, these are the members of our central office. Michael Woods is our director and Mindy Iannotti, our assistant director. And then we have a couple of center specialists who help out with all kinds of things. And um, these are the TAC field associates. Um, they're assigned regionally so that we can provide effective one-to-one -one coaching and support for any school with existing CTE programs and pathways, or those who are considering adding new pathways or having existing ones approved. We will have a new field associate in New York City region starting later this month. Um, and I'll give you a moment to write down the name and email of the person you can contact in your region. Now let's get into the meat of the presentation. 
So 94%, what do you think? Write in the write in the chat what you think 94% represents related to CTE in the state. Are we getting any answers, Michael? Um, starting to come in. <laughs> Got grad right. rate, teachers not certified who teach computer science. How many schools have some <laughs> CTE programs? Some good guesses. Okay. 94% of CTE students graduate from high school and most en enroll directly into post-secondary education. I think that's a really good status to, to brag about. And it's also a myth busted because many people think that um, students who don't Students who attend CTE don't necessarily graduate. They don't necessarily go on to post-secondary education, but they do. And I think that's important to remind people about. Michael's gonna go on with some more myths, some more myth busting. Sure. So a popular myth, a common myth we've heard is CTE is just for non-college bound students. When the fact is really, that it is for all students and prepares all students for their eventual career path. Because many of our students, you know, they go on to college, they'll get degrees, many degrees, but everybody eventually goes to work. So this is about, you know, preparation for success beyond high school. Uh, another myth is that CTE is only for a small number of low paying careers. When the fact is that CTE is now for all careers including high demand fields such as computer science, health sciences, and advanced manufacturing, to name a few. Another myth is that it covers technical knowledge or skills specific to a particular job only. Whereas the fact is that it's really a combination of academic skills, professional skills, as well as technical skills to prepare students for success in college and careers. And then another myth is that CTE is only found at BOCES. And the fact is that CTE can be found in most high schools in New York. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what it might look like in your school district. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that twice. <laughs> um, now that we've dispelled, dispelled some myths, what exactly is CTE? Here's a really good definition provided by Advanced CTE, and that can be found on careertech.org. Um, let's Let's get you involved a little bit more in the conversation. What words um, can you pick out from that definition that can also relate to computer science education? Take a moment and write those in the chat. I think people are still thinking that's okay. <laughs> and there's no wrong answers here either. I was never very good at wait time. Preparing learners for the world of work. Yes. Hands on, We've got 31 other other people here, so let's, what else? <laughs> All right, um, so I'm not gonna take any longer to talk about that definition, but I do wanna mention that CTE is generally organized into 16 national career clusters. And here is a nice diagram of that. 
Um, and you can find out a lot more about those on careertech.org slash career clusters. Um, which of those career, here's another opportunity for you to chat. Which of those career clusters do you think most closely aligns with computer science education? Susan says information technology. Okay, I, I thought of that one. Infotech Anybody? and cybersecurity, STEM. Yeah. STEM, yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe manufacturing. Which other career clusters are there, they're maybe not mostly computer science, but they would require some computer science skills. Yep, and I think there's some good points here because um, a lot of specific careers are nationally categorized in the information technology career cluster, but computer science, you know, as we've learned throughout the, the other sessions is really for all students and knowledge of computational thinking and comp computer science skills really plays into pretty much every single career cluster. Agreed, agreed. I was thinking about health science. I was at the doctors the other day and the, the computational skills, the computer skills that are needed for any of those careers, especially the high level careers are really, really needed. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about some of the less fun regulatory stuff and then Tracy will follow it up with the fun program stuff. Um, so, <laughs> How does New York State define CTE? So to go to that, we always go to our, our regulations, which defines CTE as a kindergarten through adult program of study that includes rigorous academic content, closely aligned with CTE subject matter, using the state learning standards for career development and occupational studies as our framework. Thanks. So, our CTE areas that we have, we have six CTE areas at the moment, uh, which is agriculture, business and marketing education, family and consumer sciences, um, health sciences, technology education, as well as trade and technical education. You'll often find ag, business, facts, and technology at comprehensive high schools and local school districts. Um, so that's an example of CTE being at most schools. Um, you sometimes see some health sciences and trade technical programs um, in schools. Those are also often found at our BOCES career and tech centers and in our larger cities, um, there are specialized high schools dedicated to CTE. And the way we define um, trade and technical education is it's really anything that doesn't fit nicely into the other five buckets. and. As of right now, um, we do have um, computer technology as a trade and technical area that is in that trade and technical bucket, but we're gonna sort of talk about the evolution of where that may be going in just a moment. So how do students in New York receive CTE? Uh, it's been done in several ways. So through the middle school one and three quarter unit CTE requirement, um, it previously used to be all students had to have 40 weeks of technology education and 30 weeks of family and consumer sciences. A few years ago, that was expanded into a general framework that teachers from all six of those CTE areas could teach through the lens of their specific content area and training. Um, coursework at a local education agency, um, which is fancy SED talk for a school district um, is uh, including those four subjects I mentioned above and also through approved CTE programming, which can exist at a BOCES or at a 
at a school district, and we have many school districts that do offer their own CTE pathways in-house. Um, and some ways that um, CTE can help to meet graduation requirements. So one way is through specialized coursework. So computer science coursework can be used to meet the third unit of math or science. Um, five unit sequences for an advanced regents diploma. So students who don't complete the checkpoint B in the world language can take five units of whatever the department considers to be CTE coursework in order to um, meet that requirement. Uh, the CDOS 4 plus 1 pathway or standalone credential, which is a credential of general employability. And then the CTE 4 plus 1 pathway, um, which is the approved program, which provides students with general employability, like what the CDOS does, but also specific skills in a particular um, CTE content area. Um, and then the students who complete and approve CTE program will earn a technical endorsement for students in, in approved programs. Um, so in terms of the of sharing the slides, um, we do have, um, we did email to the event organizer um, a PDF of our slides. Um, the Google document we have right now, um, I can see if I can share towards the end. It's got a lot of like our notes to each other in it still. So um, <laughs> once, once we're done and we make sure we don't forget what we have to say, we will make sure you, you get this and don't worry about writing everything down. And the session is recorded as well. So I wanted to take you back a little bit to this advanced CTE website and show you um, th this page is pulled from that website and we took it from the information technology page. So when you're in that website and you click on any one of these items, you get a lot more details. Um, the career cluster frame is a really good reference tool to research careers. And I'm gonna, I actually have us here. And then you can click on information technology and you can see that um, the career cluster frame is a really nice way to look at different careers in that, in that career cluster. Um, you see there are lots and lots listed here. And then if you go back, you can also see um, the Common Career Technical Core Performance Standards, which is another, uh, another good way to evaluate your program, your class, and see if they're addressing these national standards. Um, of course, I would, ex I would encourage you to explore on your own. If you're developing a new CTE program, this is a great place to start thinking about career outcomes, um, aligning curriculum to the, these outcomes is a really good way to ensure the rigor and quality of a program or pathway. Next, uh, Michael's going to discuss a little bit more about um, bringing these two things together, uh, CTE and computer science. And back here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, there is a proposal which is gonna be voted on by the Board of Regents next week to allow for schools to consider computer science to be a CTE area. Um, so back in June, the Board of Regents um, received um, the original um, regulation changes that, we'll, that I'll walk through um, in just a moment um, to allow districts and BOCES to consider computer science to be a CTE area. So if it's approved, uh, there's three specific things that would be amended. So the definition of the career technical education that we showed you earlier, which would add computer science to it. Um, 100.4, which is our middle school regulations, which defines the acceptable content areas to teach the middle level CTE requirement, which would add computer science to the list of the other six that we have. And then in section 80 of what are our 
teacher certification regulations, particularly around extensions. So this is the, would amend the list of certificate titles that can obtain the CTE work-based learning extension. So we have two types of work-based learning extensions. One is generally for non-CTE teachers and one is generally for CTE teachers. We would add computer science to the list that can get the CTE extension so they can coordinate more types of programs. And again, this is through the lens of adding, increasing access to computer science and increasing the flexibility for our districts and our BOCES to be able to present computer science to more students and in more different ways. So the Board of Regents is expected to vote on these measures next Tuesday. Um, so you can view um, the full regulatory changes on the Board of Regents website. And I'm in the process right now of um, taking out some of like our, our chat as we go through. So you'll have a link to the Google Slides as well. So feel free to take those, go on all the links. There's a lot of good links in there. Next slide. Uh, so what are some of the flexibilities um, to schools if schools were allowed to use computer science as a CTE subject? So computer science in grades five through eight could be used to meet that middle level one and three quarter unit CTE requirement. Um, there's been a lot of talk about pushing CTE, uh, computer science to the younger grades. So this is a way that it can be used to meet part of a re instructional requirement at the middle school level. Um, in grades nine through 12, it could be used as CTE coursework to meet CDOS requirements, allowing students to earn the CDOS credential or CDOS plus one pathway. And I've had, you know, when I was teaching, you know, some students who really struggled academically, but when you gave them computer science work or anything on a computer, they excelled. And some of those students, I can picture them in my mind right now, um, would be ones who may have had the opportunity to use that as an option. And since it's critically important for all of our students to get across that finish line and leave with a high school diploma, it's a great option to have available to our students. And also computer science in grades nine through 12 could be used towards a five unit sequence in CTE, leading to a region's diploma with advanced designation. Um, it would also, schools that are offering multiple computer science courses could apply for a nice set approved CTE program in computer science, which Tracy will talk in detail about later. So this will open opportunities for school districts and BOCES to develop programs in a high school, in a high, in a high skill, high wage, high demand field. And this may also give an incentive to, um, for schools to develop additional computer science coursework because at least three units of instruction in computer science would be required in an approved CTE program. And districts who are eligible to, um, could direct Perkins funds towards um, improvements in NYSED approved um, computer science CTE programs. So this is one that's a little bit tricky for people in terms of understanding certification. And it took me a while after I joined the department to kind of understand it. So I'm gonna kind of break down our two sort of three categories of teacher certifications that exist. So we have the classroom certifications, which those are typically earned by going through a traditional teacher preparation program, like in math, English, social studies, your science, Etc. Then you have your CTE certifications, which have been around for years, and those are typically for individuals who come directly from business and industry and um, complete their teacher uh, certification requirements while they're on on the job. And then you have what the department considers in the teacher certification regs to be classroom titles, but our instructional regs allow to be considered um, CTE titles as well. So these are like, I 
I made up the term super CTE titles. Um, so I would say these are the most powerful titles we have. So these are classroom certifications that can teach CTE content. So right now, agriculture, business, which is my certification area, facts and technology, those are all classroom titles that can teach CTE content. If the regs are approved, computer science would also fall in this middle category right there. Next. So what would this mean for certification? Because I know that's kind of the area where there's a lot of questions. Um, so certified computer science teachers and SOCE holders can teach computer science coursework as standalone courses or as part of a NYSED approved CTE program. So if the school decides we don't necessarily want to do an approved CTE program, but we want to have all or some of our students have these computer science courses for them to take as additional electives, that's fine. You're also going to have instances where you may have coursework that some students may be interested in taking an approved program pathway, and others may be, just be taking it as an additional elective. So those are things that can happen too, and that's kind of what happens with a lot of our um, programs that we have in school districts. Um, computer science teachers could teach career and financial management, which is a required course in all approved CTE programs, um, and get the extension to coordinate registered CTE work-based learning opportunities, which again will open opportunities and flexibilities to particularly those who come right out of teacher prep programs in computer science um, to teach in, in these programs. Um, their proposed regulations do not make any changes to the content of a teacher preparation program in computer science. The only thing in teacher cert regs that was touched was basically who teacher cert can give the work-based learning extension to that you would have to take two additional classes for anyway, just like everybody else does right now. And there are CTE titles and in information technology that already do exist. Um, at this time, there are no plans to make any amendments or changes to those. Okay. This is me. <laughs> Over to Tracy for the fun stuff. <laughs> All right. So um, Michael touched on a few of the benefits of a NYSED approved CTE program. And here is a, a good list. Um, a student who has achieved a technical endorsement is a student who has earned a high level of achievement in his or her studies and is prepared for both college and career. And these are some of the benefits. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to do it. So of course there are multiple resources available to help you through the approval process if you're seeking to approve a CTE pathway or program at your school. Um, I'll give you a quick overview. The process is really key. Undergo rigorous program review and reapproval process established by the commissioner regulations that Michael mentioned, 100.5, um, and prescribed by the NICE, by NYSED. There are um, guidance for you available on the NYSED website, um, but this is in general the process. It begins with a self-study of internal stakeholders reviewing each component of the approved program, of the program to be approved recommending and implementing any improvements. And then depending on how many components you have already in place, this process can take up to a year to complete. And then their work goes on to be reviewed by an external review committee. Um, and there is a list of the type of people that must participate in the external review committee. And then the superintendent and school board must recommend the program for approval. I'm going to show you quickly the NYSED website. And this is where you will find all information about having a program approved. In this drop, these gray boxes here, you can click on any one of them and see lots more information. These are the components that must be in place in order to have a NYSED CTE approved program or pathway. Um, I'll break each one of them down for you on the following slides. Um, and note too, again, that there's detailed information on the NYSED CTE website. 
and that your, your TAC field associate is here to help you through the process. Everybody at the state is really willing to help and answer questions whenever you have questions about having a CTE program approved. Everybody knows that alignment of content, standards, skills, and assessments lead to good instruction and student success. An approved program must clearly show this alignment. So the meaningful learning standard, content that's applicable to the title and the career pathway, a minimum of three units of credit plus a half credit of career and financial management, the, the coursework must be non-duplicative duplicative, and increase in specificity, um, you know, get a little more and more challenging as students progress. And curriculum maps must be maintained. There should be connections to academic skills like literacy, numeracy, etc. And maps and crosswalks to, to show standards alignment. You must align to the career development occupational standards to industry standards and to academic standards, um, particularly if uh, uh, integrated court, uh, credits are to be offered, you need to align to the, those academic standards. And that's a little more nuanced. So talk to your field associate if you have questions about that. And then all that needs to be aligned to the technical assessment, which is a comprehensive three-part industry-based technical assessment. Um, it is national industry developed and written, um, and written performance, their written assessment, there's a performance assessment, and then a project or portfolio, and that can be lo locally developed. The next component is work-based learning. All students in an approved CTE program or pathway must be offered the opportunity to earn work-based learning hours. 54 hours of, of work-based learning is optimal. Um, this is a framework that was developed, actually Michael was instrumental in the development of develop, developing this framework for work-based learning. Michael, do you wanna add anything about that? Yeah, so one of the things we've been doing over the past year is because of the importance of, you know, giving students, you know, hands-on experiences is we developed in collaboration with the field a work-based learning framework, which sort of shows the continuum of work-based learning experiences as um, individuals go through. And then another component is the employability profile. It's a key component of the approved programs. And it is a tool to monitor student progress on the identified skills and may be shown to potential employers and post-secondary admissions officers as a means to promote the student's qualifications. Involving post-secondary and industry partners in creating the list of skills is a best practice. Updating the skills as needs change in the industry is also a key practice that can keep your program viable for students and employers. Um, and it's recommended that you use this employability profile with students always as they progress through the pathway and assess where they are at in developing and, and honing their skills. And then it can be used at the end as a way to show their skills to uh, potential employers, et cetera. Again, further information can be found on the NYSED website. And there are templates and samples that can be found there as well, which can be really helpful if you've not done one before and you need to develop a, an employability profile for your program. Um, these are some of the requirements that are, that are there. Um, it follows a student through the pathway, contains a clear rating scale with measurable indicators, identifies end of program outcomes, and it needs to be revised and updated and reviewed with students regularly. An approved program must also provide at least one post-secondary advantage to students. This may be in the form of dual or concurrent transcripted credit or some other kind of benefit. 
at least one signed agreement must be in place. And we call these articulation agreements. Uh, when, you, when you have an articulation agreement or dual credit agreement with a, with a post-secondary institution, be sure to inform students and parents of this opportunity. These are some of the specifics related to CTE teacher certification. Other measures may be used to evaluate the program in order to strive for continuous improvement, but these are the ones required for reapproval application every five years. Student placement after graduation is often also a measure and is used and it is required actually for Perkins funding. And these are some of the resources that we discussed today and the um, the PDF, I believe the PDF will be shared with everybody. And Michael, did you share the, anyway, all of these links are live for you. Oh, and I can copy them into the chat as well for you. Yeah, Tracy, if you want to continue to, um, I was trying to delete some of our notes as we go. Oh. <laughs> um, so if you want to finish, I, I got all just except the last couple slides. Um, and then we can we can pop that in the chat. So people don't oh, need to I see guess our, they aren't our, links. Yeah, our okay. chatter to each other. <laughs> um, getting this moderation thing. Um, I don't know what that's about. Um, all right. So for in terms of questions, a um, couple things were in the chat. Um, so concerned about future of computer science in our schools. Um, like Christine mentioned, we're gonna be talking more about certification during the keynote session. Um, only thing we can really say is at this juncture is, you know, this is change. You know, it's, you know, change takes some getting adjusted to. Um, there is a proposal right now, which will be voted on next week that'll push the Timeline to start the CS um, certification statement of continued eligibility to 2024 from 2023. So that buys an extra year. Um, there are also other flexibilities that have been built into this, including um, a 10 year statement of continued eligibility, um, multiple pathways, um, and even um, I know some colleges are doing some like free workshops um, to get existing teachers the credit in order to be able to get the additional certification in in computer science. Um, so I mean, and there'll be more information about that in our keynote session. Um, is if the approval process is more extreme than initially desired for the district, um, then how can other CS courses be part of the other four plus one pathway like STEM four plus one? Um, currently, right now, the STEM pathway um, includes math and science topics. Um, we are still, you know, kind of exploring and, you know, there's some exploring as we go ways, you know, ways and if, you know, it could be expanded to include other things as well. Um, the regulations that we've posted are only uh, only regarding sort of, you know, where the relationship is with with CTE, but other things may be forthcoming in the future. Michael, I just wanted to let you know, thank you for letting me in, Tracy. Uh, I put the PDF document that you had sent to us by email um, in the chat. I shared it in my Google Drive for everybody. So that's pinned in the session chat. Um, so you don't mm -hmm. have to clean up your slides to share those because you have they have the PDF <laughs> version. Okay. And the links do work in the PDF version. So okay. they're good to go. All right. Um, what other questions are there? All right. And now that I stop sharing, I can see the chat a little more effectively if there are any or the Q&A. OK, um, so so list of classes and grade levels needs to be reviewed. So one thing I will point out is 
There is a list of courses that will make somebody eligible to get a statement of continued eligibility. And it was written as a fairly liberal list. So basically anything that's in New York's course catalog is computer science, um, you can use to get a statement of continued eligibility for. There will be instances in which certain courses, you know, kind of like there are now, can be taught by multiple certification areas. So for let's just, I'll use an easy example. So there's a course title in business programming. So that will still be able to be taught by a business teacher as well as a computer science teacher and possibly other areas as well. Same thing with tech ed. There are some courses that will have some crossover into tech ed. Um, while the computer science certification does go K through 12, um, it's anticipated, and this is kind of like how business facts and tech are right now, that the majority of computer science certified teachers are probably going to be at the secondary level. There may be instances where um, a district may choose to utilize a CS certified teacher to teach computer science as sort of like a special area at the elementary level, um, but also but what I'm presuming may happen in a lot of districts is it may be also taught at the elementary level by a by the classroom teacher, the common branch teacher, or they may have a um, separate um, teacher who may do some computer integration within within the class. Other questions? Um, is a list of what classes will be still be able to teach with an elementary business teacher. Um, that has not been released yet. Um, that is something, you know, that is still being worked on and it will be coming out at some point, I believe this school year, um, to give people some time to prepare to see if they will need a statement of continued eligibility or not. Okay. Anything else? I saw a question up here earlier. Is the CTE approval, if the CTE approval process is more extreme? Yep, we addressed and, that one. Oh, you did? Yep. Okay. Well, I wanted to add that I would encourage you to go through the CTE approval process because it's really a, a good way to take a, a look at what you're doing and really try to improve it to improve outcomes for kids. Yep. And our office, as well as the CTE TAC, you know, we're here to provide support and all of our all of our support and resources are free of charge to schools. So it may look daunting, but typically when one of us will sit down and kind of break it down to you, it's really a lot more manageable, you know, especially if you have, you know, at least three units of computer science coursework okay. in place. And one thing, you know, we have started to look at with some programs that have CS taught in, um, business or tech departments is um, there's the possibility that if it fits your program, AP computer science tests could be used to um, meet the part of the technical assessment requirement. I love helping people walk through program approval, the program approval process. And honestly, and I know you may think this is crazy of me, but it was one of the, my, my favorite parts about being a CTE director because um, bringing together the stakeholders, like bringing together educators and business and industry people to talk about what works for kids and what works for the community is, is was really exciting for me. So if you're interested at all, if you think you might have an idea for how to, how to do that and you want to contact me or one of my colleagues at the TAC, please give us a call, give us a shout. All right, what other questions? Okay, thank you, Josh. All right, so what I will do, um, if other questions come up later, um, obviously next week, the Regents meeting is gonna be voting on a lot of the things that we've talked about today. Um, so I will put my email in the chat if there's any questions as you're reviewing through materials or if, you know, at some point 
if it's approved and you want to take you advantage of some of this flexibility in your school, um, this is some, you know, where our office is more than happy to, to help in this process.